Hey, hi, hello, hi, hey, welcome. I'm so bad at starting podcasts. Uh, hey, welcome to another episode of Jeff Has Cool Friends. My name is Jeff May, and I have a cool friend that I want to introduce you to. If you know me, you probably know this very cool friend. He is one of my bestest and coolest friends. Oh, he is also oh. my co-host on Tom and Jeff Watch Batman on the Gamefully Unemployed podcast. He is currently a writer for Weird History Food which is, I need to talk to you about. It's like kind of why I, I, I want to know so much more about this, but the amazing Tom Ryman. Tom, how you doing, bud? Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing better. You hyped me up way more than I'm now really uncomfortable. <laughs> You're, I only said two things about it. I know, you, really. I can't can't take it. I can't, I don't know. I'm, You've I'm, done I'm, so much more too. Uh, stop. I would Hi. also add the only person I'm willing to be in a group chat with is you and other guests of the show, Logan Trent. <laughs> that's the only group text i'm really in. i'm in two yeah i'm in two it's who's the other what's the other two? Oh, they're a bunch of my friends back home um, oh yeah like i don't my friends back home don't care <laughs> <laughs> i've never like i've never they're like my maybe i'm the dad that abandoned them i guess because i moved you're the one that went out for a pack of smokes and didn't come back so yeah so i get that but like my friends don't give a shit like I'll come home and like maybe some of them will be like, yeah, let's do a thing. But for the most part, you know, what's weird. My friends don't seem to care, but weird, obscure people from high school. Do you get that? Oh, well, or, or like, did you get cracked fans from your high school that would be like, oh, my God. Oh, no, that's not happened. Really? Yeah. Well, I've never really gone. I've only gone back home like twice and I've never been to like a reunion or anything like that. So, and I'm not really on Facebook or anything. So I don't, oh, yeah. I'm not really reachable by anyone except people who I remain friends with from high school. You, you pieced out, huh? I really did. Yeah. I kicked the dust of that berg off my heels. And <laughs> I remember I did, I forget what the article was, but there was an article that I was a part of in Cracked and somebody from high school messaged me on Facebook and was like, look whose name I saw in Cracked. You're like the most famous person in our graduating class. <laughs> and I went, that is more an indictment on our class no, no, than a compliment to me. That's not. <laughs> I, I think several of our teachers would weep if they heard that. Yeah. I'm like, that's sad. Like, <laughs> I think we graduate. I think a couple of people are doctors. Maybe <laughs> message them. Like, I'm useless. I'm fundamentally useless. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, if okay, put it this way, Tom. If the apocalypse hits, how long are we gonna last? Listen, you saw the finale of Game of Thrones. The world needs storytellers. <laughs> and I like to think as a comedian, we're all truth tellers, really. <laughs> oh, is that we speak truth to power? <laughs> it's gonna be really helpful when people need to grow beans. Yeah. Speaking to, to be the beans. Yeah. <laughs> you guys ever notice that the beans aren't growing fast enough because the soil's toxic and poison? You guys ever notice that? the dirt turns our feet it is it's definitely one of those things where i do think about that like the, it really hit me in a huge way because adam and i started doing like the baseball cards and the, the non-sports cards things which if you're wondering that's 1992 marvel masterpieces oh hell yeah the joe jesco one sealed mm. i talked him down by more than half Nice. Of how much he wanted for those because he wanted a lot. Uh, but I walked into a baseball card show because I wanted to get a feel for it. Because spoiler alert, Adam and I, I think we're going to get a table at a baseball card show <laughs> for you don't even like sports cards. And I went in there and I was like, oh, so like I looked around. And I was just like, these are just a lot of grown men, myself included. Collecting cardboard rectangles that are little photos of men that do things. And I was like. We'd be <laughs> like we'd be so screwed like we've invested our money in little cardboard rectangles yeah and i was like it's so silly and so dumb or like if they like excavate <laughs> like if they if the world got piled under rubble or something and then they excavated like my house and they found all the like plastic <laughs> toys and stuff yeah and they'd be like i don't know man this guy seems like this guy must have been some sort of king he was buried with all of his <laughs> All the things he will need in the afterlife, like this, <laughs> like all these this Mark Lemke lobster, cards, these lobster men. <laughs> yeah, I've often wondered. Like what the, I, I've had that same thought about like aliens coming to the planet and finding all the pop figures. The, I was literally going to say the Funko Pop yeah. mound, <laughs> being like, "What the hell were they like?" They 
thinking they're like totems or something. Yeah, these have to be weapons or like a race. You must, this is really be, important to this society. This uh, is for climbing this, Jeff this Goldblum random, Funko. Yeah, yeah this <laughs> Carl Drogo <laughs> mounded up. People didn't buy him. Trying Funko trying to sell the aliens on like the gray men from the X Files Funko <laughs> Pops. Oh, so these are a growth, a growth industry. Yeah. So you and I met obviously through Cracked. You yeah. were a you were a writer there. I think we met we either met at the offices or we met on a episode of Unpopular Opinion. I think we met first at the offices because I remember you were coming in to record with Adam. Yeah, and then I we was were like, on a show together. I think the, one of the episodes. Yeah, because I definitely remember like being there and the energy from a lot of the people at Cracked is like, is this I work here? Like, what's this guy do? Uh, <laughs> which I was like, ah, I know, I don't even know. <laughs> was it from the was it from the cracked people or was it from like the demand people? Yeah, it was like the cracked people. Oh wow. Like <laughs> where people would be like, there were a couple of people that were like, Do you work here? <laughs> like and I was like, nah, I mean, kind of, I guess. Sort I of. I'm like pinch hard. hitting. Does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you know how in Island of Dr. Moreau, how he had the little sidekick <laughs> with him? I guess I'm that for Adam. If that... Except the height differentials reversed. Yeah. It's just <laughs> it's very, yeah. But then we did an episode of Unpopular Opinion, and it became very fast. And I think our we have one of those unique friendships that I think was really solidified via Twitter. Really? Yes. I Because we actually created our podcast together running a bit on Twitter. Where you and I kept riffing on Batman back and forth. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. And somebody said something that was just like, I'd listen to that podcast. And then they did the cracked, did that huge dump. <laughs> took a, they, took like, a big old everybody. dump. Yeah. They took a big old dump. And yeah. I messaged you when you and Dave announced Gamefully Unemployed. And I was like, I'll do a podcast with you for free for a while to get you guys moving. That's um, right. Yeah. I forgot about uh, that. And I was like, and it was it. I was just like, let's do, we threw some stuff around originally. And I'm glad we didn't do this. I know. <laughs> I'm so glad we didn't do this because just all the machinations of it would have been a headache. And also we would have, we would be, so, we would look like struck matches right now. We would be like <laughs> frazzled. We'd be, we looked um, like Jim Carrey in the number 23. Yeah. We were going to do Tom and Jeff watch Batman on Gamefully Unemployed. And then on the old network that I was starting, we were going to do Jeff and Tom watch X-Men. Yep. Where we were going to. So we were basically going to do the same show with two different things. And we real very quickly that network that I was working on dissolved. Yeah. But then beyond that, too, from a time perspective. That would have been it would impossible. have been difficult to do. I still want to do that show. <laughs> I don't not want to do it. Right. I, it's <laughs> just. After we, doing Tom and Jeff watch Batman for brace yourself, Tom, five years, five years. Yep. We are celebrating. If you are listening to this, like right around the release, Tom, we will have been doing this for five years. That's not fair. That's not. I fair. hate that. <laughs> five. So like when you think about that, right. Yeah. And we missed three weeks total. Maybe. Maybe. I Maybe. Because I, I think I, I don't. Yeah, I remember we did. We had to miss one week where we just recorded like a quick little one. It was like a 10 minute yeah. mini sode. But yeah, we really rarely miss shows, period, on Gamefully. I, I nearly, I think you and I are the same way. I kind of refuse to miss shows. It's the what Dave and I have found with Gamefully, and I'm sure you're probably have experienced the same thing, and Adam as well, because Adam is also just <laughs> consistent like a f machine. I don't know. I don't think he sleeps, but consistency. Like yes. we found like that is the one of the most valuable things to your audience. And that's a big a, from just from my personal experience and from what we've all kind of experienced by doing our own Patreons and stuff like that really is the best thing you can be committed to is just being consistent. And then that's the best way to, to grow your audience, to grow your community. Like, yeah, it seems so simple, but it's just yeah, if you put the show out every time the same week, it starts to build. It, and once you stop doing that, like I had to, 
I actually like went through like a slight crisis because I had to delay Jeff has cool friends by one week. It was during a five Tuesday week. So like I didn't five Tuesday still, week. <laughs> I mean, a five Tuesday month, excuse me, it's, it's uh, like, where like it was Captain like crunch, like oops, all Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, but it was like one of those things where like it would have been the third episode to drop that month and I had to delay it. I had like a kind of a, a thing I had to deal with. And I was like, I was like breathing into a paper bag, not getting that done because when people ask me, because they'll ask you for advice, I'm sure. And they ask me the same thing. Like, I want to do a podcast. I was like, first off, what's your hook? Second off, be consistent. Yeah. Those are the two things that are going to, and also get good equipment, but get good mics. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to, nobody wants to listen to you if you sound like you're in a tin can, but that consistency is something that I've learned. And I, I probably picked that up. I mean, I guess I would have to have picked it up from Adam. Yeah. Because he's been, he started that up in 2017, 2016. It was 2016. Oh, what? Unpopular opinion? Yeah. Yeah. The, the network, the, the network. The network, yeah. He was yeah, doing the show at Cracked for a few years before that, but 2016 is when he launched like the Patreon and junk or the Kickstarter and stuff. Yeah. Then he got fired. Then he got fired for it. Does he mind us saying that? I don't, I, I, he's, <laughs> I mean, I, he had to have addressed it at some point, but we, and, but, but like, Getting that information and him just being like, "Yeah, that that happened." Yeah, I all right, let's go do a show. As we were landing, I yeah, think, it was ba- like as, as we were landing back in L.A. And then no, uh, we were in Chicago. I thought it the ball had like I thought it had started. This is my memory, but I oh, okay. I thought it had started that weekend while we were on the tour. Like Adam was being like, he's like, I think I'm gonna There's get a fired. Vibe happening here. Yeah, he's like, I think I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> <laughs> and was, yeah maybe that was the case i might and then uh, i feel like it officially happened when we like as soon as we touched down in la adam's like oh i'm fired and then i don't want to yeah i don't no, want to speak it's for anybody good. else yeah, we, but like <laughs> but also like has anything worked out like the one thing about the cracked purge which i think is something that people really romanticize the golden age of cracked do they that's cool oh yeah like People still come up to me and talk to me about how that's how they like. And I didn't even work there. Like <laughs> you guys had a cult. of. Uh, how are you surprised by that? like, how is this? Like, I don't, news? I don't know. I think it's just, there's been so much time. I had a lot of complicated feelings about it. I still do. So I just don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. people don't reach out to me about cracked really. I think they, I think it's been long enough where people don't, it happens on Twitter a lot with people where they'll like somebody like a Swaim or a Cody will say, and like in the comments, it's always like, there should be a reunion of all the crack people. And then somebody will all, always type in and be like, yeah, they have those literally all the time at, at Gamefully Unemployed, <laughs> at Unpopular Opinion, or at, you don't even like this show, like at Small Beans, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah, all the beans. crack people are, are, it's, it's still this like complicated Charlie from Always Sunny line, <laughs> line of, chart, of, yeah, doing, yeah, working together and everything like that. And, and it is funny when like they try to be like, you guys should do that again. And whenever they say that to Adam, Adam's just like, that's never going to happen. You guys need to move forward and love all the things that the people are making. Yeah, which I think is very great. Everybody's making stuff. It's awesome. Like you said, small like, beans, and then we got to one eight hundred hot dog with Brockway and Sean Baby and. Yeah, everyone's doing and great work. Yeah, And the, here's the thing that I think people don't really understand fully is you can get the quality of work with none of the breaks or governors that were put on. Not that there were a ton, but they were like, very minimal. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's unrestricted information and you can literally pay the creators directly. And that is, I think, that exodus is obviously bad because it was probably a decent paying job with benefits yeah, it was a job with benefits <laughs> uh, yeah but also it has led to some of the most successful creative flourishes that i have seen in one sitting i'm so much more like i said my feelings about cracked are complicated i've obviously a part of me still misses being able to go into that office every day with all these awesome people. That was a, yeah. a, a very special uh, moment in time and also a very brief moment in time. I am really like, I think the stuff that everybody's doing now is like so great. I'm so excited to be like, all of my friends are still making stuff and it's awesome. And it's even better than it was before. You got Katie and Cody with some more news and Katie Golden doing Creature Feature. And also she's co-hosting Schmitty's uh, Secretly Incredibly Fascinating with them. And then you got Swaim and Abe at uh, Small Beans. And then 
you guys at Dan some- walking around with like six Emmys by now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Dan is so- Man. Soren's on American Dad. Yeah, like yeah, it's just yeah, Dan really fell into some gold. He did. <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, he didn't that, fall that into work, it. He worked. No, for they, it. I was gonna say that that work process must be a lot. But yeah, like it is funny, like with gamefully and where you guys sort of built it up you and dave and it, the irony being that it started as a gaming network right. it was <laughs> going to be like game streams and we were doing board game stuff where we'd all drive out to culver city yeah I've... and you'd have it was like a ta- a long table of cracked alumni playing D. yeah oh man i miss that i miss that a lot we're trying to figure out a way to do that again possibly virtually somehow since we're all kind of spread out now yeah but we really do miss the board game streams we want to do that again i remember doing it and i came in because you would always have like a fixed group and a guest and i came in after soren and so for the D &D game yeah yeah, i was playing with like soren's the character that soren had set up and it was like i forget what the scenario was but it was just a relatively insane thing and i think it was like the character was obsessed with doors Something like that, yeah. Like the, he couldn't stop being obsessed with doors. The way that it, we worked that show, it was called Big Trouble in Tango and Cassia, which we still haven't finished. Like technically, there's two more episodes that need to it be was done like to finish. Every that story. episode was a new '80s theme, or That's something. That's right. Like every that. episode was like a new '80s movie. <laughs> so like, what we had yeah, done. we crash landed in Predator. That's right. Yeah, after the um, uh, Soren was controlling the guest character during the License to Kill episode when they're in the cocaine factory from License to Kill, where Wayne Newton is. Anyway, and so we took off in a magical helicopter from there and then crashed in the jungle in the next episode, and then that's when we fought Predator. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember Robert was like Johnny, Johnny grenades grenade hands or something like Johnny that. grenades. He would just drop grenades on himself. It was totally chaotic. And uh, I mean, it's exactly what you wanted him to be. And Dave's yeah. totally chaotic when he plays too. It was just the way we did that show is we had a patron. I, I believe it was a tier that we don't have anymore. But we had a tier where come to our house and eat dinner with us. <laughs> no, we had them create the character basically. They like sponsored the guest character on the show. And so the idea was they created the character like with the character sheet and stuff and deciding what class it was and everything. And then we would just use the patron's character and then the different guests who came on like you were just playing that character that patron made. I thought that was really fun. Um, I want to finish that that story. We were about that's really cool. We were about to fight Robocop. That was going to be the next episode was we were going to fight Robocop. (laughs) I mean, I'm in. Like, cause gamefully you guys started in what, like, like March or something like that. January of, 20, of January of 2018. January yeah. of 2018. So, yeah. The first thing we did was the, we just watched for Winchester. Yeah. And I had done a couple of guest spots on shows, right? Like hype cast or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What it was like. yeah. And you and I were talking about doing the show. And by, by June, we ended up finalizing what would become the prototype first month. Yeah, the show, the show was we really covered, different that first. It was a bit ambitious. Yeah, <laughs> of of what we were going for, and it has slid to obviously what we do now. It started, and I always tell people they're like, "Where should I start?" And I was like, "Probably like Batman the Animated Series." Yeah, that, that's the whole uh, reason I wanted to do the show in the first place. Is I just wanted to watch the animated series with you. <laughs> so. Well, you and I would always just go back and forth about all the the like kind of. I think Batman the Animated Series, and I think we've discussed this on our show, but here, like, I think Batman the Animated Series is overly romanticized in quality, especially the first season. To a degree, where, yeah, to a degree. There's a lot, like, there's a lot of great stuff. Right, because the, the, gr- like, the great stuff is really great. Yeah, like, it really hits, is. The hits hit, yeah. but people really blank out all the misses. On the bad ones, which there are and a few. There's not a lot. Like, it's... There are bad episodes like and let's like the first couple of episodes are just insane. I do um, like the man bad episode, even though it's yes. weird and it's a weird way to start it's the series. A huge ask yeah. to start a show with. So um, this is Batman. He's fighting monsters, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Does he fight monsters every week? Not every week. Not, I mean, what is a monster, really? One of the monsters wears jeans. Yeah, <laughs> and he is a monster. <laughs> he is a monster. And then one of the monsters is a 
theater professor that lives in the sewer and kidnaps children. The frog? That's a weird <laughs> that, episode. That, I think the big thing was you and I talking about Batman suplexing an alligator in the sewer. <laughs> And we were just like, we got to talk about that. Yeah, obviously. We need to devote some time to that. And then five years later, we have created a rich tapestry of characters that we've created. We have thrown different behaviors and attitudes onto random characters and created this insane cult (laughs) following with this show. I kind of want to go through it again in a couple of years, maybe. Like revisit, revisit the like animated redo series. Redo an episode, like redo a series. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Man, I that would people would get like, I think equal parts very excited and furious if we did that. Maybe, yeah, uh, because they're just waiting for us to do Gotham. I know they are. <laughs> they want us to do Gotham so bad. <laughs> I think we're gonna have a similar experience with Gotham. I think we're really gonna find everything that's crazy about that show and really be able to have fun with it like we did with the last man that pro wrestling video that somebody made do you remember that riff oh oh, yeah we did a riff of like what if all of the batman and his rogues gallery were wwe superstars yeah (laughs) and david bell was on that episode yeah yeah and there's no better person to prod a bit than david bell yeah like he, that man is the king of a passive yes and. Yeah. Where he sees something working, he's like, he just starts. Let's see what else you can do with this. And, then, and, and that was yeah. <laughs> and then someone animated it. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And, uh, it's really funny. Yeah, it is. It is really fun. It's. I love doing that show, and I oftentimes will, because it's in my nature to belittle my work. I will say things like hard same. Oh, I, I just talk about Batman. Like I'm useless and I talk about Batman for money. But in reality, it's like one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, it's I like that uh, it's I like that it's essentially become knowledge fight, sort of. Or it's I, yeah, or it's I mean, like you're just it's basically you're like showing up and describing an episode of Batman to me and I'm just reacting. <laughs> kinda. It's essentially knowledge fight with Batman. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, if I didn't think that we were very good at doing just a rewatch, I would have suggested because we were we originally were, we were, had like segments that we were going to do. We were do. like kind of scared about doing it as straightforward as that. So, like, if you listen to the early episodes, we were we're trying stuff out because I felt like we were worried about like is it's is it going to be enough if it's just a straight rewatch? Like, we have to kind of jazz it up a little bit and then it turns out no it works totally fine when it turns out we're the jazz i guess because <laughs> we i mean th- there are characters and as much as i i loathe to try to cross over one thing to like one shows and really like when i look at like the way people have talked like characters we've created i think the first main hit character we created was good boss scarecrow good boss scarecrow yeah Because, like, there was something about, like, the first episode where, like, all of his employees seemed, like, really casual with him. Yeah. And he was, like, very equal to them. Yeah. Like, they were all, like, he didn't have an office. He was hanging out with them in the room. (laughs) He was a real hands-on boss. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed really cool. And, like, people, they could question him and he wouldn't kill them. Yeah. (laughs) Good boss, Scarecrow. And then I think. Like I, I just one. like one of them points out like a problem or something with the plan, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you're right." Like I feel yeah. like that was like an element of it. Yeah, like or like like, nor, like the Joker would kill that yeah, guy. The Joker would have thrown you out of the blimp. Yeah, yeah. You say that to Two Face, he's digging in his pocket, like <laughs> he's trying to find a coin. So we did good guy, good boss, Scarecrow, and then I'm not sure if he was next, but he certainly was the one that had, pardon the pun, but the most teeth was modern feminist killer croc yeah woke croc yeah woke croc yeah. hey socially responsible killer protection. croc yeah yeah get woke heel <laughs> but stuff like that where like it starts in one place and then it just we have evolved in such a weird strange way but it's in no way if somebody's listening to a new episode are they lost yeah, I, I mean, so. I guess maybe if we do the Martian Manhunter, yeah, the, the, <laughs> Martian Man, we for those of you that have he might listened, actually be my favorite. 
to <laughs> Tom and Jeff watch Batman. When we started Justice League, we noticed that Martian Manhunter. This is sort of like a behind the podcast <laughs> show because like breaking down how like the thought process goes from creating this character yeah. that we noticed that John Jones, who's Martian Manhunter, is like kind of a bummer. He's a real drag. <laughs> yeah, like he's also delivered in a very monotone, serious voice. And it seemed like he he would reference Mars like a couple times an episode. He brought up the fact that his entire planet was dead like more than once. <laughs> yeah. And so we just kind of gave him this like sad boy on we. And I don't know how it happened. And somebody in the comments will remember or we'll go back and listen to the episode. But somehow we, we created the idea that the reason that all of the Martians died was because... <laughs> John Travolta as Howard Saint in the 2004 Punisher movie. That's My greatest foe, out. John Travolta as Howard Saint in the 2004 film The Punisher destroyed my world. <laughs> Murdered everybody. He killed my wife. And that's funny on its own end. <laughs> but when you deconstruct that bit and you picture that John Travolta drug <laughs> cartel <laughs> associate. Like a Tampa Bay drug lord. <laughs> drives his car to Mars. Oh, shit. drives his car to Mars with a gun and, and just kills shoots every all Martian the Martians on the planet. <laughs> but it is actually Howard Saint from the Punisher film as played by John as, play, as portrayed by John Travolta <laughs> and Martian Manhunter knows that it's John Travolta playing I don't know why like does he that know that <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of, of like breaking down a joke but understanding the ridiculousness of that really i think is a testament to like pulling it back to how much fun it is to do this job and it is a job it is work yeah but how much fun it is to see where it goes organically versus where my notes are yeah that's where the bits come from for sure yeah like my bits will sometimes be like oh great this jerk or something like that. Or I might, if somebody shows up, if Martian Manhunter shows up in an episode of Static Shock, for example. Which has happened. <laughs> happened. I will put in parentheses in the notes, probably to talk about Mars or something <laughs> like, like some, give me like some sort of cue. But in reality, like, because people do ask, like, do you guys set up these bits? Do you guys discuss them ahead of oh, time? No, I'm, we don't discuss no. the episode at all ahead of time. No. I mean, sometimes Jeff will send screenshots screenshot. without a context just to look like here look at this dumb yeah, this one if it's like superman juggling a ufo yeah <laughs> or when we're superman rocketing across the ocean just on his <laughs> yeah. chest or superman flying backwards with his cape over his face um, <laughs> just getting totally wrecked oh man yeah. clark eating stuff that was a that I really loved that bit Oh, hungry Clark! Yeah, that his Superman just everything. eating his enemies, <laughs> <laughs> eating everything. He, I think recently we discovered eating garbage. Yeah, just eating trash. <laughs> just eating trash like a pelican, <laughs> and that's so much. But that's really like it's fun that we get to return to that. Yeah. Whereas if you're doing something like the weekly the shows that you're doing, which we can talk about, we're going to talk about obviously that. This is like a respite for me. The work, like taking the notes and watching the stuff is the work. That's the work. And that does take time. And obviously it, it takes time to record the episode and it takes yeah. time to edit it and stuff. So it's, we're having yeah. a lot of fun. It is a job. The payoff for me is the recording. Yeah. Like that for me is getting able to talk to you for like an hour or whatever a week after suffering through sometimes the worst there's been some like bad guys, stuff. What's the worst? The wor the worst thing I think might have been probably Hush was just like the most edge lordy bad version of a great story. Yeah, they Hush really mucked it up. I remember I feel like there was one of the one of the suicide squad ones was really kind of grimy. But yeah, the, I didn't the Hush is the one that, that the war timeline I didn't love the war timeline. It was okay. I sometimes. thought there was a lot of good stuff. I thought the best stuff didn't involve Batman, which was very ironic. Yeah. But yeah, it might be like the killing joke. Oof. Yeah. Man, that's a real slobber knocker between <laughs> Hush and killing joke. But 
I mean, I'll tell you the hardest things to get through note wise might have been Super Friends just because Super Friends episodes in the first season were 44 minutes long. Yeah. And there is a lot of nothing. Nons- There's a lot of nonsense twists. If you're writing notes and you look up, you might not know what. So there's a lot of pausing. Yeah. People ask me a lot about the note taking process. So I'll put it this way. Getting through a 44 minute episode of Super Friends as a watching process is about three and a half hours Yeah, of work. Now, the longest thing might have been the Snyder Cut. Yeah. That might have been. That was a month. Yeah. Yeah. We a, did four parts. A generous of that. month. Mm-hmm. Because we're probably going to have to do a month on The Flash. Yeah, that's a two and a half hour movie. Yeah, I did. I, the fun thing is, though, that I love the Super Friends episodes that we did, that we recorded. They're um, hard. Yeah. Oh, the episodes we did are, I think, some of yeah, our best. It's, and the Scooby-Doo ones, man. Oh, Scooby. I forgot about Badass Fred. Fred with his, his uh, crime wrench or whatever. His, what was it? His mystery <laughs> solving wrench? Mystery, his mystery pipe or whatever. <laughs> yeah hard ass Fred beating some old ass amusement park operator trying to commit insurance fraud <laughs> getting beat to death by Yakuza tattoo Fred with his ass caught man oh, those man. were fun episodes those were great like yeah stuff from the 70s is really fun to work with because they couldn't sell toys <laughs> so they just had to make weird yeah it was fun. yeah it was bonkers in a totally different way do you have a favorite episode that we've done? Like, is there an episode that you're like, I'm going to go back? I love, man, I think we did Batman and Robin with Keith Carey, didn't we? Yes. Because <laughs> he felt he said she fell into a batch of horror film. <laughs> That's right. And we also did the uh, best bad movie on Batman and Robin with, with Keith Carey as well. And that was a hysterical episode. I loved when we did all the movies. We, we did yeah. Batman with Dave and Batman Returns with maybe also Dave. I can't remember all the guests now. So. And then we did Batman Forever with Adam, Todd Brown. And then we did Batman and Robin with Keith Carey. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm sc- Excuse me. We did the best bad movie on Batman Forever with Keith Carey. And then we did. Yeah, okay. That, I got myself confused. I liked that. I liked when we redid the four main movies. The Snyder Cut was fun. Man, what is yeah, that? we got I remember because we got Chris Uminga on for, for one of them, yeah. Because he's like a huge Snyder fan, which is funny. Like for those of you that don't know, I mean Chris Uminga's done the show. He was actually the first episode, but you know, he's a designer and he's worked with you know his Batman statue right behind me. And to like be able to have somebody on who's a genuine fan of something that we think is not that good was well, really fun. We didn't come down at that. I remember when we started the episode, he was sort of surprised. Like he was like, I was expecting you guys to just shit on the movie the whole time. There were a lot of parts to shit on. There were. The, the movie is a, like, here's the thing. If I'm done watching your four hour movie and I say, well, there wasn't, then it wasn't bad. It's a fail. That's a failure of a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. Like it was better than the 2017 version. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, getting stabbed is a little better than getting slightly. Shot. Yeah, because at least then I'll get to ride in an ambulance, and that's kind of fun. You get to run all the yeah. lights. Yeah, that's <laughs> exciting, right? Yeah, that's a fun uh, night. It is very interesting, though, to look at it, and I I do like when we have guests on, but I also like that we make it very rare. Yeah, it gets to seem like an event, and usually that means if we have a guest on, that we're probably going to do like one free episode. To like, yeah, it's usually people to get on. Yeah, it's usually when we're doing like the big, like the movies yeah. or tent pole. Yeah, a big tent pole one, and we'll split it into a few episodes. I'm assuming with Gotham, we're gonna have to pull on Dan O'Brien and Soren for an episode, right? Yeah, for sure. They had a running bit at Cracked, yeah, where Dan would come in every day after the new episode of Gotham aired and explain it to Soren. And Soren, to my knowledge, has never actually watched a single minute of Gotham. <laughs> So it was just a running bit at Cracked. So yeah, we would probably have to try to get them on there. Yeah, that I remember he because he brought Dan brought it onto Twitter. He yeah, would, he would tweet the synopsis of the episodes on, <laughs> and I think people have mentioned that to us that they were like, "You guys have to get them on," and I was like, "Yeah, that's not your idea." Yeah, <laughs> we know if they want to be on. Yeah, right. That's yeah, right. <laughs> you guys want to do our podcast? <laughs> Yeah, but we should be due. I mean, obviously, I think The Flash is probably going to need guests. It will get a guest for The Flash, yeah. Yeah. 
And I people, a lot of people asked if we were going to do it now, if we're going to drop the flash now, to which I said no. Yeah. Because I can't do that. I can't take those notes in the theater. To, I can't bring my- Yeah. It was it was like that with the Batman too. Yeah. We know we we had to wait a little while and people kept pinging us like when are you guys gonna cover the Batman? We typically wait till it's on like HBO. So like Yeah, it's it needs to be pausable for me, but I also prefer it to be accessible for the viewers. Right. And getting a free trial of Max or having Max already is a lot easier for some people than going to the movies. Yeah. Going to the movies is financially expensive. Some people aren't mobile enough to get to the movies. Some people don't live in an area where there's a movie theater. But HBO, baby. Tom, I want to talk more. I know we've talked a lot about us, but I want to talk more about you. Before we do that, I don't know if you know this. I have uh, what we like to refer to as a, a Patreon. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know that. And uh, it's patreon.com slash Jeff May. And if you're listening for free, thank you obviously yes if you're listening for money thank you way more <laughs> thank you year. better <laughs> yeah and i do have a tier i have a producer tier spoiler alert i stole that from who you oh uh, i think we probably stole that from somebody else it's absolutely yeah i think we've all gotten <laughs> to that point right so we have producers we have producer names and if you uh head on over to the producer tier at patreon.com slash jeff may i will go in between every episode of jeff has cool friends and i will say that name so i'm gonna shout out some people tom you ready i super am by the way it used to be like a hundred names because Humble i set my price so low <laughs> I set my I set the producer type price to ten dollars a month. I believe that's is, what our tier is. <laughs> no way. I don't think so. Because oh, you guys only do like Oh, you might be right. Yeah. I need to check yeah, on that. I, I had to bump it to twenty five, which I think is a much more manageable amount. Like I make less money on it now, but I also don't it's not so many pick names up 45 you can possibly of read them. Yeah. Names. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, obviously the names were always fun, but all right. So and see, Tom, I want to see if how many of these match pe- ones that you would know? Okay. Right. So we'll start with the wandering unpierced left nipple. Sound familiar? No. That's, That's a new one. This one. All right. How about each and die Grand Canyon? <laughs> have you been to the Grand Canyon? I have. Yeah. What'd you think? It was big. Yeah. It's a big hole. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I that's what I figured. Yeah. A bit of the Hoover Dam too. I had the same reaction. It's a mighty big hole. Yeah, I'm a, in spite of the fact that I grew up on a farm, I'm still kind of an inside kid. Yeah. Well, and that's not interesting to me. Like whenever someone's like, look at the majesty of nature. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty great. I like nature. I like being it's, but yeah, I get it. I don't get like, I don't typically have big reactions to like sightseeing or landmarks or things like that. I enjoy it. I like seeing stuff like that, but yeah, I've never like been moved to tears by a rock formation or something. When I think about like the things in nature, I like the most and it's like the beach. I like being like at the ocean and I realize it's because it's active. (laughs) Like I like silence drives me crazy. I can't do silence. Like I'm peace and quiet to me is a tragedy. Yeah, it's I have tinnitus. So like when. Oh, gee. So, yeah, it's just ringing. So the it's whole like, time. Well, what's funny is for the longest time, I thought that's just what s- silence sounded like. Oh, uh, was just this low frequency, high like no high frequency, actually. Yeah. But yeah, you get that fixed. How do you get that fixed? You don't. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you just wear headphones less. Thanks, uh, science. I don't I haven't played. I used to play in a band for a long time. I haven't done that in a while. So that's helping. Yeah. Who wins in the what if crossover we truly deserve? Doodoo suit Bruce versus doodoo suit Logan. That's, that's a new a question. That's a new one. That's that a, is a question. That's a very specific reference to your work, though. So clearly, that's a person who is a listener of Tom and Jeff Watch Batman. Yes, that's true. Who do you think would win? Doodoo suit Bruce versus doodoo suit Logan? I'm going to give it to doodoo suit Bruce. I'm going Logan on this one. Going Logan. All right. All right. Yeah, because if he's wearing the doo-doo suit, he probably doesn't have, like, the utility belt on. You think he doesn't? I mean... You think he doesn't have something in there? <laughs> it's a pretty thick... I guess it's a pretty thick suit. He's but got Logan's some f- bat-shaped grenade in there. But doo suit Logan is just Wolverine. That's true. It's just Wolverine. Just regular Wolverine going out to eat at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, and also doo suit Bruce was mega horny. He was. So, that's true. Yeah. He was too, All right, he looked uh, like a horned up eclair. 
shout out to the producer formerly known as the ghost of Dave Thomas or the producer formerly the ghost of Dave Thomas. I do know that patron. I, I might have typed uh, that one. Uh, shout out to you. I haven't had carbs or sugar in a couple weeks and I fantasize about deli sandwiches now. I can relate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I've been cutting back and being more active and it sucks. It's pretty miserable. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Danish cheese guy who supports the free town of Christiania. Bevar Christiania. Nope. Shout out to this producer, by the way, who sent me a link to what this means because he wanted to be like, I just need you to know this isn't like a Nazi thing. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, I was like, great. Hi, your friendly neighborhood mortician here asking you nicely not to store important documents in a safe deposit box. Good advice, but no, this is, is a new person. She is. I want to shout out my friendly neighborhood mortician because she always has really good advice <laughs> in her producer notes. And I'm just like, I feel like you could write this off now. Yeah. Technically, you're doing like consulting work. Yeah, that's consulting work. You can write this off. Shout out to Mr. Billy Beck. Here's one I think you're going to know. Uh, the Tubi Terror Bunny thinks you should watch more Rutger Hauer films. Yes. I was going to say that reference to Tubi is one that I know you're going to reference. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to that scene in Meet Joe Plaque where Brad Pitt dies. Mm. Shout out to Justin Wood. <laughs> shout out to Bart Fardigan. I felt really bad. Justin Wood, by the way. Huh. I know a comedian named Justin Wood. And so when I messaged the person, I'm like, are you the comedian? Justin Wood, like my friend that signed up to be nice. And they're like, nope. And I was just like, oh, that's my bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a common name, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to Bart Fardigan. Shout out to Dan Adamski, world's humblest man. Mm. Here's one I know you're going to know. Shout out to Norm from Cheers. Norm. Shout out to Dan Hackroyd. Know him too. Shout out to Mind Freak 555. <laughs> shout out to Andrew Howe's nemesis, McGuire. Yep. Shout out to check out this month's nerd with Dre and Jeff. Tom, spoiler alert. Here's a reveal. This month's nerd is going to be Gremlins 2. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to talk about Gremlins 2. The new batch. That's right. We're doing, Dre's idea was to do insane sequels to popular films. Sure, yeah. So, like, I don't want to reveal the, what the episodes are going to be, but... I uh, probably guess a few, yeah. <laughs> what would you get? What would you guess? Crocodile Dundee 2 is at the top of my list. That would be a good one, but we're not going to do that one. But that is insane. He's, he's like, he's, hey, New York is weird. And the second one, he's like, I'm going to go to war with drugs. I'm going to fight drug dealers in the outback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of them's animated, by the way. Oh. Right? It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. No, you've stumped me there. But yeah, no, I would definitely put Crocodile Dundee 2 at the top of that list for sure. Yeah. It's uh, hold on. I'm gonna, I'll send you in the chat. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and then that one. Sure, yeah. And that because like just like how diametrically different they are versus what they started what as what they were originally, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, uh, Rambo First Blood Part Two. Yeah, that <laughs> sort of misses it. I mean, it's it has the a lot of the uh, similar action beats, so it's not such a different film. Whereas like the other ones, like they're just they're like thematically Rambo two might be the most opposite sequel. Yes. Of a movie of all time, but though I think the ones that we went with are the oh, this is what they're doing in the second one. <laughs> oh, the this second one. This is your idea. Got it. Yeah. This would be like being like Jaws 2, Jaws in Space. And you'd be like, <laughs> what? Obviously, that's where you go with that. Also, it's weird that critters took four movies to wind up in space. I thought they were from space. They are. That's the whole point of Critters. Like I, like Critters was funny to me as a horror film because they're monsters, right? We yeah. see them; they're monsters or gremlins. But I forget that the backstory is that they're actually space criminals <laughs> yeah. that are on the run from bounty hunters. <laughs> it's right, and it's like you forget that about Critters because it's just a gremlins knockoff. Yeah, but the reality of it is, is that Critters is this like rich. <laughs> sci-fi tapestry that then inserts itself into a horror film and that's right i for, you forget that about critters and critters 2 is so wild i don't critters think i've seen it it's an easter movie sure you've got to have at least one of them right there's got to be one yeah and spoiler alert tom they paint the critter eggs like easter eggs oh and hand yeah them out naturally across the town yeah that's how you that's how you get critters 
That's how you get – is that – you want critters? Because that's how you get critters. That's how you get critters. So painting these uh, eggs. Shout out to Dre Alvarez for pushing me to do this. Wound. And then finally, we're going to bookend it with watch me use these prehensile nipples to pick up pennies off the floor. That's impressive. Pick up the pennies off the floor. Get the pennies off the floor. If your name didn't make it to there, it probably means that you didn't message me on, on Patreon, but you should head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff May, and you can get on there. You can also sign up for different tiers like the ones where I mail you stuff, and I am piecemealing those packages together to mail out for everybody's May package opening stuff. Technically, I they're love all doing the May package openings because they're hey. all... <laughs> I love doing these, but sometimes, uh, like May, I opened up way too much cards, and it made my life a lot harder. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, yeah, I can, right. <laughs> I can see how that could get away from you. Because <laughs> okay, I would do uh, the May, same thing; I wouldn't be able to stop opening them. <laughs> so. A bit ambitious. Well, it's funny too because I was telling you about how much fun Adam. Because I'm going to talk. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I not a lot has brought me joy lately. I've actually been like really like base. And sure. like nothing has really made me very happy. And it's something that I'm like addressing. It's something I've actually said out loud for the first time yesterday. And it was like really unfortunate where I'm like, I don't think I'm happy. I'm and I was going through all the stuff that makes me happy. Mm. And it is like doing Tom and Jeff watch Batman or doing like an episode of Unpops, but also like opening cards on camera. But just in general, it's really fun because it's gambling. Yeah. Now. <laughs> I was talking to you about it and you were like, yeah, that does sound fun. I used to, I loved baseball cards as a kid and everything like that. I mailed you a bunch of that I had for you. And what I did was I threw in a box of baseball cards, right? Yeah. I think there's two actually. Oh yeah. Probably what? Like 91 Donruss or something like that. Yeah. I had extras and I was just like, well, here you go here. He like, also threw I was in like, like a, fir- like not a, an Anastasia pack, a pack of Anastasia cards, yeah, yeah. a couple of random packs of stuff. Yeah. This is some random sh- to open. Yeah, it's uh, great. But I, I sent you that. And I think I, I said like, oh, yeah, like if John makes it out or something like that, you guys can just f- open up packs of cards. It's really fun. And so I want I wanted to share that fun with you. But also it's like a painful addiction. <laughs> I don't know if you mentioned how if I mentioned how Adam and I are going to be going to a f- baseball card show. You did. Yeah. Yeah. So like got to be careful with it. But yeah. Man, it is pretty cool when you pull a Chewbacca refractor. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy. What a Wookiee. So you post-cracked Exodus. You found yourself for a while at Collider. And yeah. I think when I had you on Sideshow, because oh, one of the things I forgot to mention when you were talking about like leaving Cracked and it gives you a lot more creative freedom with the stuff that you make, there's no person being like, I don't think that'll work or something like that. You're just going to do it. Yeah. And you and Dave have made incredible shows. Oh, thanks. Because you don't have somebody holding you back. Like I, per, like I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm assuming you don't either. No, actually, um, I do. I listen well, to do. all of my friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just don't have a lot of time. I, I don't. I usually don't. It. Won't get through them all. But yeah, if I'm yeah. like working out or driving or just doing yeah. something where I can just, if I'm doing a kind of work where I can be listening, because I can't always be listening to something when I'm working because it'll distract me. Yeah, it's um, words while you're trying to come up with words. Right. But if I'm doing something like editing or something like a show doing Photoshop for like a hot dog article or something, I'll be listening. to that. So, I, yeah, I don't have too many opportunities to listen to them, but I do listen to podcasts today all the time. Yeah, I really enjoy Hypecast. <laughs> like, I really like listening to it because it's just it's you and Dave's like check in. <laughs> pretty so, much yeah well as, you know and then <laughs> i love doing the movie night yeah movie with, night's great uh, I do, on I do friday night movie night so gamefully unemployed right friday nights if you're on the ten dollar tier you get to like basically watch movies with uh, us i want to say i don't always make it mint on card sometimes gets in the way or i'm not yeah involved. it's always me and dave but there's invariably other people from the crack diaspora like abe or swain will sometimes show up logan is there a lot christian um, yeah yeah, there's it's people just kind of uh, drew one of my newer friends who I met at Collider, Drew Grant. She'll oh, drop in. Eric Barnes is usually Eric's there. usually there. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah. people just kind of drop in and out, but it's just a chill hangout that we actually look forward to doing. <laughs> yeah, it is really fun. Sometimes I'll get there and I realize that like I show up and there's already like eight people on mic. Oh, and that's I'll just fine. Be like, and I'll just be like, 
all right, I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm just like, there's nothing I can add here that'll help. It'll just add more chaos. But when you do that show or whatever, when you do like Hypecast, I really enjoy listening to. Like, it's one of... It's one of like the three podcasts I I actually listen to. Oh, because I just don't have time. I subscribe to people's sh- mm-hmm. shows. Yeah, for sure. But I don't have time to listen to them all the time. When you make this stuff and you have to consume so much stuff to be able to make it, it's hard to then listen. That's true. Yeah, and it's it's there's only so many hours, and I have like a zillion different side jobs too. So I don't, I, I run out of time pretty quickly, but what's funny about Hypecast is actually, that was a show I initially was trying to do at Cracked. Mm-hmm. Like I was pitching the idea of a weekly show that we could, it would have been probably video, but a weekly show where we would just do exactly what Hypecast is, where we sit down and just talk about all the new trailers and the new yeah. movie and entertainment news of the week. So yeah, that was like when we launched the network that were the, those were the two shows that we initially had were Hypecast and we just watched. Did you actually suggest it at Cracked and they rejected it? No, it wasn't rejected. It was just, it was towards the end. So oh, yeah. we were trying to come up with stuff that was cheap to do that could be shot in the office because we weren't uh, using the YouTube space anymore. Like they, toward the end, they were just hacking away at us like we didn't even have our own camera equipment anymore so it was we just had to try to film everything within the office so we were trying to come up with ideas for shows that we could do that would be low cost low lift and something like like i that so i just pitched that idea for a format and it's not that it got rejected it's just it was one of those possibilities like oh yeah that could be something that could be done pretty cheaply and easily and then we all got yeah, the boot. Yeah. It's like deciding what's for dessert the night the Titanic hit the exactly. Iceberg. Yeah, why don't you hold off on what you want for dessert? <laughs> so then I remember as you were kind of like floating in the ether looking for work, and you settled in Collider. Yes, you worked with them for a while. Yeah, about um, two years. You, you had relocated to like what San Bernardino or yeah, I had moved yeah. up to we had moved up to Bakersfield first, which was a huge right. mistake. <laughs> And then, whoops, yeah, Victorville after, which is what's much, Hell yeah. much better. Yeah, we liked Victorville. You know why I like Victorville? Because there was a Cracker Barrel right there, baby. Damn right, you had a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> you were like five minutes from a Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it was great. Hell yeah. And all you had to do was live in 120 degree weather Holy all the time. Shit. Yeah, it is so hot up there. Good God. But we couldn't afford to live in Los Angeles anymore when I, because uh, for all of 2018, I didn't have it work. It was yeah. just the Patreon. And it was still getting off the ground. So we weren't making much quite yet. We didn't have much of a following. And I was just trying to get whatever side gig work I could do. I was doing, I did some Mad Magazine stuff during that time. I did a lot of copywriting, which is a ugh, not a fun job to do. No, no that, that's the non-creative part of writing. Yeah, that's the kind of slop that, yeah, anyway. But I was just trying to do whatever for that first year. And then we finally couldn't afford to live in Los Angeles anymore. Because if you guys don't know this, it's expensive. But if you don't have a full-time job for a year, it's like kind of hard to live there. may have mentioned this on this show, but like there was a two-year span where I was edging homelessness. Like I was like right. I was about to be homeless from like 2014 to about 2016. Man, no, I didn't know that. And yeah, like advert, like you don't advertise that. Like all of the money I made went to like rent and bills. And I unfortunately was like Uber driving, which is like yeah. a really, it's a, that's a trick. It's a trap. Yeah. It's a survival. You survive, but you don't thrive with that job. And I would like sneak food. Like I would like every meal, every breakfast was peanut butter with the vitamin in it. Oof. And then I would just like exist until I was in a place like that night where I could like find food. It was weird, right? Because be- living out here is difficult. It's so you relocated hard. to the Cracker Barrel. I did. I, we moved into the Cracker Barrel. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, That's why I and, did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, not. I tried getting like I, w- I was like, hey, what do you get? Anybody want to drive out to Cracker Barrel? But I also had a car that couldn't handle that drive. It would like overheat. <laughs> <laughs> and of course i finally get my new car and you moved yeah i know listen we can um, afford a house out here so yeah yeah so what we have that's really interesting too so you were at collider yes and what did you do there well i got hired by drew drew grant 
was working there at the time. And O'Brien actually hooked us up because he had, no, I forget how, but they were friends already. And he was like, hey, she's looking for somebody. Why don't you reach out to her? And so I got that job there doing kind of also uncreative writing at first. Like for the first year or so I was at Collider, I was doing this, the real garbage articles you always see at the bottom of uh, an article, you'll see there'll be like a bespoke like space where just like random links will be put in at the bottom. Like you'll never believe what this celebrity looks like now, or here's interesting facts. We just learned about Harry met Sally. There's always like a carousel at the bottom of a lot of articles that have just these like clickbait things in it. So I was writing that exclusively. I know from another friend of mine who does that, who's done the show, who we've already talked about on this episode, but I don't want to name out loud. He said that those are the most like demoralizing things as a writer. Yes. To be asked to do. Yeah. And it was, it sucked, but I don't want to, it was bad, but it was a job and I needed a job. I needed a job with benefits. I didn't make very much, but the benefits were all right. But anyway, is that after that, I got to uh, the second year, that initiative fell flat on its face. It was like, it was kind of shady with the company. They were, I don't want to say anything else about that, but we eventually just stopped doing that. And I got to actually do the real editorial stuff at Collider where I got to do movie reviews and columns. And I actually did a a press junket for the Guy Ritchie Aladdin movie. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, okay, so your movie's bad. Well, I did. Uh, How do you react to that? If you can find the clips of it, I do ask Guy Ritchie how many extra wishes he thinks Jason Statham could have gotten out of the genie. And what he, was the answer to that? He, he well, it's an oh, extre- no. it's an extremely British answer. He fully stopped. He was just kind of paused for a second and was like looking down in his lap, and he just kind of nods and says, "That's actually quite funny." You're like, "You're <laughs> damn right it is." Yeah. And then he was like, "I actually just talked to Statham earlier today." But he said, yeah, "I imagine to make Wrath of Man." I think at that, yeah, Wolf. yeah, that must have been it at the time because he did the Gentleman right after that, and then it was Wrath of Man. Yeah, but yeah, he said loved the Gentleman. Wrath of Man was rough. I didn't see it. I know it's a remake of a French film. Yeah, it's a French movie, but it's not good. But anyway, he said he figured Statham could probably get a few more wishes out of him. Hey, <laughs> vice. Yeah. I didn't give me a couple more wishes. I wish for more wishes. <laughs> it just... does, doesn't work like that. Oh, really? How to say what a fucking you are. How to say what wish. Snatch, by the way, the only thing I ever bought off of Amazon was the Snatch soundtrack in like 2000. Really? Because I you couldn't get it in the US. Huh. So I had to order it from Amazon and it was sent through the UK. That's some good songs on that soundtrack. But yeah, anyway, so working at Collider, it was difficult because they just didn't have very much money to pay me. But I really, the work was a lot of fun in, until it got bought out by another company and then most of us left. But anyway, I don't need it's to. It's the story of digital media right it there. It really is. It's. I liked what we were having. We were making money. So a company saw that there might be profit in it. So they came in and then they ruined what was making money. It's the venture capitalist bullshit. It's all Michael Douglas and Wall Street. We're still doing that. We still haven't figured out that it is ruinous and doesn't actually make any companies any money. All it does is drive people out of business and put people out of work. Anyway, it was fun. I I, I, I liked doing the work that I did and loved all the people I worked with there. I'm still friends with them. We have a our slack going where we all talk every day so it's that was a cool experience and obviously i got to meet more friends and a couple of them have been on hypecast and then obviously i loved collider yeah every time i would go because i mean i got my connection through collider was actually john schnapp right Um, that's right he was my he was a friend of mine yeah he was the one that brought me on to like collider heroes and all that stuff Mm -hmm. but then i ended up working with like Wendy from Collider was one of my co-hosts at Sideshow. That's right. Yeah. And like, I'm friends with like Koi Jandro. Right. So like all those people at Collider, like that seems to be like my story. And I guess sort of the title of the show, Jeff has cool friends. I didn't work for Cracked, but I was there. Yeah. I didn't work for Collider, but I was there. And it is like a weird avenue to be at to be a weird orbit to exist in where people are like i don't know what the fuck you do but <laughs> but so okay so collider was going and then of course it didn't yeah it was this kind of the same thing that happened with 
cracked. I don't, I'm not going to get too much into yeah. it, but it was just basically a company came in, they made us all contractors instead of full-time employees. And within months we were all gone. Yeah. <laughs> we left, everybody left and took different jobs pretty much. And yeah, so that was sad, but you can't, I had already learned the lesson from the crack that I took away was you d- love the people, but not the place, right? Like, cause the place, the job doesn't love you, but the people no, you no work job with, loves you. Correct. Yeah. No job will ever love you. And nobody's, you're never going to be on your deathbed wishing you worked yeah. more. And <laughs> you are, and it's important to know you are unlovable. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. As as, uh, yeah. Like you, you aren't deserving of love. Is what I'm no, certainly not. No, the work Especially that I do. Especially not the job. Oh, <laughs> definitely not. But yeah, it's I am remain grateful for the experience and the opportunity to work there. It was a lot of fun and all the people there were really great. I kind of feel that way for the most part about Sideshow too. But for me, the realization that like, oh, I don't belong in in this kind of environment, like the like eggshell environment of like, and obviously like it wasn't my idea to leave, but it was a very fast. Yeah, this is probably for the best when you realize that like you're you know, having to self-edit too much and yeah, then you, you start that, to get into a weird creative space with that. Yeah, they were very big on like no movie is bad and every movie is someone's favorite. So we don't we're not mean about other movies. But what it really was is like don't f- over our Warner license by saying Wonder Woman 84 was bad. That wasn't very Did I ever good. send you I have a collection it's in a folder of the tweets that they sent me which is like the why i'm not there anymore have i ever shown you those i'm pretty sure you did but i don't remember any of them individually (laughs) because like it's such a it's two very different things it's either a donald trump is a bad person no you can't say that people donald trump people buy are we gonna lose our donald trump license (laughs) no they're gonna lose the donald trump money Uh, and the voters they don't want to get bud lit but then the other one was it would be that and then it would just be like me making fun of wonder woman 84 there was like one tweet where it was like wonder it was about how warner was putting wonder woman 84 up for like oscar (laughs) for the fyc ads for your consideration ads or including best picture and i think i quote tweeted it and just wrote this is like that spider that puts a web up on my door every day like (laughs) <laughs> we it's all the, know you're not going to catch anything, but I admire your perseverance. It's the far side cartoon where they've built a web at the bottom of the slide. And the one spider says to the other, if this works, we're going to eat like King. <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. Oh, and that was in there. So it would be all this stuff like social justice stuff. And then me making fun of Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's yeah. fine. I mean, uh, but now, so you've shifted now to weird history food. Weird history and weird history food. Weird history and weird history food. Mm, which is over at Ranker. It, it, which is Ranker. I'm really enjoying your work. Thank you. But a funny thing is you actually brought a guest of the show, Valerie Tossi. Uh, yeah. Cool friend with an asterisk. <laughs> when you guys were looking for VO and I was just like, I don't know if you know, but like Val is like a, an accomplished VO actor and did like a bunch of stuff. She was like the voice of Google Home and all this stuff. Yeah. And, and you were like, yeah, I'll connect her to my people or whatever. Mm-hmm. Your scripts, I mean, all scripts are good, right? All, all these scripts are good because they're going through editing and whatever. Yeah. But I can see, I can, like, she'll be like, oh, look what I have to read. And I'll look at it and I'll be like, that's not a Tom. And then sometimes <laughs> I'll gonna be like, that is a Tom. That one is very much a Tom. <laughs> like your style of writing and your joke structure, I might, it's you and Adam Todd Brown. I know your voice. <laughs> so like i know your voice so when i see it in writing i will always be like i know exactly where he was going with this what to, like i can know like your mindset now <laughs> it's so funny yeah i think yeah after how many hundreds of hours of the show that we've done yeah it's yeah. it comes through on the show too where we very often are in the process of making the exact same joke about something <laughs> and then it spins off into one of those bits yeah. about it i think we work well because you're very thoughtful and structured and i am much more cacophonous and much more pinball-y with <laughs> with my thoughts but it is funny that i've i've read that yeah, so that's, that's you cool. write for these so what's some of the 
Okay, I have a couple questions about that, and then I'm going to let you go, and we might do some bonus content for the other people. Sure. But we're real quick, Are is there a dream episode of Weird History Food that you want to do? Something that you're like, I absolutely want to do a video on blank. Bennigan's. You want to do it on Bennigan's? There's a, we have several buckets where we, which is like, <clears throat> just a phrase that, for the listeners who may not have heard the term, it's just a phrase that some writers rooms will use to, to just describe no i can't even think of it but like like a like genre a category, a category yeah, like, like a genre like of, restaurants yeah fast or like a restaurant article a junk food article exactly yeah a doesn't exist anymore article yeah okay precisely yeah so it's like there's a couple of like yeah like i want to know your white whales on this one so bennigan's bennigan's and chi chi's and in terms of salsa <laughs> it's a celebration of food yeah, they had a wrought iron bull in the lobby of the one near my house. I was fascinated with it as a kid. I've I, been to I, neither of those places, by the way. Really? Oh man, no, can... I've like I've never been near those places. Do you know the Monte Cristo, the sandwich? Yeah, they that was like Bennigan's big item. Bennigan's your Monte Cristo sandwich is <laughs> quite popular with the crew. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Chi Chi's was just. It was probably not very good, but as a kid, I really loved it, and I would get the Mexican pizza all the time. But I don't think that place has been open in forever yeah. but there's a couple remember they sold salsa they bottled their own salsa that's true it. i think you can still get it some places because i remember the commercials because like chi cheese salsa yeah and that's the only thing i know about chi cheese <laughs> well it used to be a chain restaurant yeah well so that like, i mean let me i know that part i'm obsessed with like defunct chain restaurants there's a bunch man there's so much we have so many potential ideas for episodes written down you gotta do one on friendlies Friendlies is a possibility. We actually Friendlies just, is dying, man. You need to save them. <laughs> we just had a big hit with George Foreman Grill. Oh, um, nice. That did was, you talk about Hulk Hogan? Didn't talk about Hulk Hogan. We talked oh. a little bit about Evander Holyfield's real deal grilling machine, though, <laughs> which was a thing that existed. Man, there's a there's just a lot. Bartles and James I want to do. Oh, yeah, right. That's fun. Yeah. Like, it's fun coming up with these things where you could be like, I sure would like to do a thing about magic middles. Yeah, squeeze it. It's like any like man, it's, it's the bonkers to high chew existence. Oh yeah. Candy bars, like old timey weird candy bars. It's just oh yeah. There's so yeah, we... there's just so so much. It's like such a good space for yeah. a YouTube channel, Weird History Food. And Weird History is too, but there's a lot more competition with Weird History right now. We have a lot of channels that just rip us off wholesale. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, it's fun. It is a my where I work in the video, I don't have any really interaction with the publishing side, so I can't speak to any of that. But the video department, I'm my official job title is producer. But in weird history, it's just it's the most like cracked that it that I've been at a job since cracked. It's just really yeah. cool. All the people there are awesome, and we're all kind of like minded. Like there was like one of the interviews I had to do to get the job was like literally like a vibe check. Like it was like, hey, just. Talk oh, to a yeah. couple of members of the team and see how you guys vibe. A, a, a chem, a chem test. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's just it's really fun to just sit there and we have like I think we have two different brainstorming sessions a week with two different groups of people, me and my boss. So it's yeah. it's just so much fun to sit there and just think of okay, like what what kind of what would you want to see a video about? Like what is and it's just a really fun space to play around with. So I'm very happy to be doing this and I'm glad that. Like Valerie's doing an awesome job with the VO. I'm glad the scripts are as good as they are. It's just fun. It's a fun I, gig. I will get messages being like, you have to read this line that Tom wrote. <laughs> and it'll be just like a killer joke. She's, or the other part too, she'll be like, I need you to pronounce a word for me. Because it was just like, there's some like, she'll have to do one about some like Czechoslovakian. Oh, yeah. Those... Thing, and she's just like, I didn't get information on how to pronounce this name. I Yeah. <laughs> I should do that. I should include pronunciations. Yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> you might want to. I guess. Like, I don't. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. I don't give a. Sure. I, I'm. I did my job. I connected two people, and I'm out. <laughs> I col I collected my finder's fee of zero dollars. I'm good. The other thing that I really love doing at Weird History is timeline. That, that uh, series. I love the timeline stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I hadn't had any involvement with the previous series, but I did 1970s. That was last year. And I actually wrote every single episode of that. I did all the research and I did all the writing for that. 
whatever it's your timeline 1977 exactly yeah it's a oh, cool show that yeah that that one's really fun i really enjoy that one it's um, next the 2010s i i can't tell you i don't think <laughs> oh well, <laughs> I yeah i don't want to get in trouble and i don't want to well, it's less about getting in trouble as so i don't want to commit to something and then have it be wrong Fair you know, enough, yeah. or have it be like oh we can't actually do it this year we've um, never done that before <laughs> So, okay, I shouldn't say anything else, but timeline's really cool, and we are hoping to expand upon it in the future. Hell yeah. That's the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah. That's that sh- that sh- that real sh- So we're going to wrap up. For those of you that want to hear more and you are not listening on the Patreon, if you head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff May and you just sign up for uh, you know any of the $5 or above tiers, we will have bonus content. It also, the episode's uncensored. And I have, I'm going to do some rapid fire questioning with Thomas Ryman, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So head on over to that. But before that, Tom, obviously Gamefully Unemployed, right? And on social media, it's at Gamefully Un, but the Patreon is patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. Correct. Yeah. G A M E F U L L Y and then unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. <laughs> so, what else? Obviously, Weird History and Weird History Food. Yep. You can follow both of those. You subscribe to both those channels on YouTube, Weird History and Weird History Food with Franker. Yeah. If you did the Patreon, 100hotdog.com, I do some writing for them. It's all great, funny stuff. Schmitty does some. Jason Pargin does some. Obviously, Robert Brockway and Sean Baby, Lydia Bug. There's a lot of great writers over there. Small Beans, we do stuff with them. We have two joint podcasts with Small Beans, so patreon.com slash small beans. If you want to get all of the episodes of Star Trek The Next Futurama and Spiel Boys, which is the two shows we split between the networks, so you check that out and you get it all. And I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's everything. Hell yeah. <laughs> who who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a collab. A collab? Uh, yeah, we should. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do that. A uh, a Jeff X Tom collab. <laughs> Or whatever the kids are saying. I don't even know. Definitely check out Tom's stuff. Tom, you're one of my favorite people in the world. Oh, thanks, uh, man. Uh, even likewise. if you weren't, even if you weren't, you would still be one of the funniest people I know. So, man. so that that'll even if you were a dick, I wouldn't take away that you're f- funny as hell. That really um, that means a lot coming for you, man. You're a hilarious stop. person. Hilarious dude. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff May, man. That's is it? <laughs> right. Sure. <laughs> Boy, do I not like myself enough to agree with you after you Listen. were so gracious <laughs> accepting that compliment. Yeah, thank you. I, all right. I get it. We both I, had trouble doing it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, blah. I'm like, oh, yeah. stop it. But if you guys like this, and of course, if you want, if you want more, definitely check out Tom and Jeff watch Batman. I think Tom and I, I obviously I don't want to commit to something the same way, but I think we're going to, we're going to do something to celebrate the fifth anniversary that might sort of entice people to want to jump on board. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that. If you want to hear me, of course, on, you don't even like this show, formerly on popular opinion, as well as you don't even like sports, which is me and Adam Todd Brown's podcasts. Head on over to the, I don't know what his Patreon is anymore. If it's patreon.com slash unpops or if he changed it yet, but you can find the information. I'm out there. Also, Adam and I do, you don't even like sports cards where we live break boxes of trading cards. (laughs) <laughs> Very exciting. Very fun. He pulled a f- autograph out of a pack. No sh- like, Wow. The last time we did one. And like, I think like a patch card. Oh, wow. Like we found some cool sh- And like man. chase cards. Damn. Yeah. Oh, no. We got like, we opened a box of golf cards and like, I got like some dude's shirt. But I'm like, boy, is this not as fun as like when you pull a pack of like football cards and there's like a jersey. Yeah. Or like bass. But like when it's golf, it's just like a guy's shirt. <laughs> I mean, that's really all the jersey is, too. Yeah, <laughs> but it's dude's like... dude's shirt. <laughs> yeah, but it's not just like a regular polo shirt. That's true, you know? yeah. like It's like, cool. It's not, just a, it's not just a shirt you can get on the internet. Like, it's made specifically for this person. Right, for the sports I thought it was team. really funny. But yeah, you could check that out. Obviously, if you are listening to me on patreon.com slash Jeff May, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're getting Ugg Fine with Kim Crawl. You're getting access to Nerd with Dre Alvarez, which is also free. Uh, which is a lot of fun. I've been having a lot of fun on that show. And Dre Alvarez is a f-ing hero. I love that dude so much. But you can check that out. And uh, also, I Must Break You, my non-sports card break show. You can do that. And then I have other stuff live. Mint on cards the second Friday of every month at Blast in the Pass on Magnolia in Burbank, California. Bye? Yeah, I, I think so. Bye. All right? Yeah, bye. Hey, everyone. Our 
artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as artnessbyjustinbrown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at troynababon.com. Nababon is spelled N-A-B-A-B-A-N, and boy, does that shred. Thank you all so much for listening. See you next time.